Good morning. Are we there? Anybody home? Good morning. Come on in. Grab a seat. Day two of the cock-a-doodle-doodle-doodle. Come on, we can do this. This is so nice. I saw some of your work on Clarity Worldwide yesterday. You really do like the colouring, don't you? I do too. I really find it very relaxing. And I, I spent too much... Good morning, come on in. I spent two hours uh, this morning, actually. I, I got up really early and just to get ahead of you, you know, to get my eye in and to make sure that we've got some direction when we get together. It's no good being a designated driver if you don't know where you're going, is it? Come on in. Good morning. Lovely to have your company. We're early today. It's uh, three minutes to ten. Stuart's in the building with you today. So if you have any questions, Stuart will be there to answer them. And all we're doing, in case you missed yesterday, we're using um, one of the postcards from the green set. We're doing the cock a doodle do. I thought this week it would be nice to do something nice and bright and fresh and yeah, vibrant. Yeah. So last week we had an amazing time in New Mexico, didn't we? And then what the deal is, this is what we've said we're going to do. Then we can stay at home, stay home and craft, right? And then we do a bit of colouring and a bit of zen, which is really relaxing and very good for the head. And then next week we'll go off on our travels again, all things being equal. I haven't quite decided where we're going to go yet. Um, no, I haven't quite decided where we're going to go yet. Maybe not too far afield this time. New Mexico, the jet lag's a bit overwhelming, isn't it? You know, it's, um, it takes ages. You can't fly directly from England to uh, Albuquerque. So you have to go via, right? So you have to go via Houston, Texas, or you have to, it's a hop, skip and a jump. It takes forever. It's, not, it's, it's quite expensive too, as a result. Um, 9.58, early to the party. Come on in, good morning. Have you got your, have you got your postcard ready? Have you got your colouring pencils? You can use any colouring pencils, you know that. I choose to use polychromos, the Faber-Castell ones, because I think they're brilliant. And also um, our pergoliners, they're good too. The colours that I'm using today, I'm looking, I'm going to the, the, um, the polychromos. But I did have a little test and I found some, you know, some good colours to do as well. Um, in the pergoliners, I did a couple of tests. So in the um, in the pergoliner set, if you're looking for, when we start doing the tail feathers, um, I found that this combination was really lovely. Uh, if you've got, per if you're using the pergoliners, the ones that I used or would recommend, I mean, you've, you know, it's, it's a, uh, entirely up to you but I've used what have I got here the number seven the number 16 the blue and then this really beautiful b6 the b pencils the blending pencils this dark foresty green and when you overlay them you get a really nice turquoise so that's pretty cool um, and we're going to be using because yesterday many of you were asking right the polychromos so the ones that I'm using, let's just have a look here. I'm going with, um, when I do the, when we do the comb and the wattles and uh, the cape, gosh, getting very technical here, the head bit, right? I'm using geranium lake. Let's start with the lightest one, just so that you know, because many of you were asking yesterday. Cadmium orange, pale geranium lake and dark red. But I mean... Look, you've got loads of different reds in this box, in this tin, right? But I mean, you can use any colour. Golly, you use what you've got in the cupboard. I just, I know that a lot of you want to know exactly what I do. So I'm going to tell you. Right, cobalt green is the lighter one. Cobalt turquoise and then Prussian blue. Light, medium, dark. Light, medium, dark. Ah, uh, there's definitely a pattern here. Oh, and then I've also got another yellow that I use. 
What's that one called? Dark cadmium yellow. But again, look at the number of yellows in this box. So you decide which colours you want. I just have to give you some kind of orientation. And then, of course, my old HB pencil. So let's have a look. Ten, one minute past ten and we're already getting technical. Come on in. Welcome to the Shack Shack. Safe, happy and creative. Stay home and craft. That's right. And it's a beautiful, beautiful, not a cloud in the sky today here in Crobra. How about where you are? Come on in. Good morning. Good to have your overcast Devon. Mm. Mm. Nice in the southeast, not so nice in the southwest then. Now we've got beautiful weather here. Now let me just see. Stuart's in with us. Stuart, could you just text me and let me know that the volume is okay? That's always a good idea, isn't it? To I changed the batteries up. So I've got the batteries, the new bats in. So we should be all right. I don't want to have a repeat of that game. And then I thought today, now where did I put my bit? Oh yeah, where I came in early. I'll show you what I want to do today. See, the thing is, it, we're going to work on this all week, can't we? And, um, and my guess is that you, um, this is a big learning curve for a lot of you. And what the biggest learning curve around colouring in, colouring in like artist colouring in, like what we're doing here, is time. That's the magic ingredient, time. You have to give time, time on this one. And lots of patience. Time and patience. Patience and time. Pat. Let me just have a look at where we're at. Just stay there a moment. I'm on my own in the building. And then suddenly you hear the gates open. You think, oh, we've got to come in visiting now. Right, so let's have a look. Nobody. <laughs> so today, yesterday, we did the feathers here. We did the cape. We started on the cape, didn't we? I said, cool, we could spend the whole week just doing the cape. So I thought, well, we'll do a little bit of the cape again, just another layer of the cape. But today, I thought it would be nice. I really am pleased with the way the feathers came out, the tail feathers. Or the sickle, apparently. These are called the sickle feathers. Well, you can see why, can't you? They've got the shape of a sickle. I thought we'd have a look at how we've done the sickle. And then this is the comb above. And the wattles, there's a pair of these big things. Can't be comfortable, that, can it? So he's got his wattles, he's got his comb. Do you know what? When I looked at this uh, yesterday, I thought, it looks just like a pineapple. Let's have a look. Let's get up close and have a good old... Look at what I've done here. Doesn't that look like a pineapple? The armour, this bit. I thought that looked like, just like a pineapple. If you took off the head of the chicken, the cockerel, it would look just like a pineapple. So I thought today we'd look at the comb, get a nice, get some nice um, shading on that. We'll look at this, the wattle. And then I thought we could look at the tail feather. Quite nice. I like the way that's come out. And if you get in really tight, let me see. Let me just hold it there. See if it see if it gets sharp. Now, if I hold it like that, can you see when you look at the tail feathers, can you see little white markings so it's not super smooth? See it? And that's, you know that we've done that using our, um, let me hold it like that, using our white pencil, haven't we? See, if I hold it at an angle, it looks as if, you can really see it's as if it's layered, can't you? But of course it's not. It's as flat as a tack, isn't it? So that's the object of the exercise today. Today, are you comfortable with that? Everybody happy? Let's get in a bit tighter on that overhead camera, shall we? Let's just get up here and have a... Oh, long way, wrong way, wrong way. Well, hey, that's a bit strong. That, let's have a... Sorry about this, guys. It's me engineering. Right, that'll do, I think. Yeah, it's good, because you can see then, can't you? And I haven't got my head in the way. No, not too much. Good, good, good. So how about we do this, eh? You ready? Time. It's all about time. I spent 
Yeah, it must have been two hours doing those tail feathers this morning. You know? So when you say, cool, aren't they lovely? That's two hours worth of lovely. And I, and I was getting impatient because I had to, other things to do. <laughs> this is a force of habit. Look, I decided to go with water today because I don't think I drink enough water. Do you? I drink gallons of tea, but I don't think I do enough water. So I bought this thing, it's expensive. And I thought, well, everybody's walking around, all the young people are walking around all trendy with a water bottle. And I thought, I could do that. <laughs> and then when we were in Glasgow, because I like sparkling water. <laughs> so when we were in Glasgow at the SECC in March, I learnt something the hard way. You don't put sparkling water in one of these. I tell you what, <laughs> I'll never forget. I was with Hilda Smith. I think Hilda was with me. Good morning, Hilda. She was there as well. Anyway, I opened this up, right, and it went, <laughs> and this water. If you've ever been to the SECC or the NEC, you'll know that the ceiling's a long way up, like really quite a long way up, okay? And I heard this bang, right? And then this water shot up and then <laughs> we all looked up <laughs> and then it came back down again and we got absolutely soaked. This thing was like a torpedo. Poof. Yeah, so no, no, not sparkling water, not a smart move and not Barocca. I've tried that one as well. That didn't go well. The fizzy orange thing. Yeah, lessons learned. But there you go. I'm on the water today. I've decided I've got my rowing machine. I've got my water. Going, I'm going for it. But first of all, let's do this tail feather and the comb. Right, come on. Enough waffle. Welcome to the party. Welcome to the shack shack. Let's start with the red and the, the red. This is what we're going to use. The reds, the oranges, the yellows and the HB. Uh-huh. See, one of the things about these postcards, these art, they are artists colouring in postcards. They're not, you know, there's a load of colouring books and that, and they're just really thick, sort of stylized, very pretty, but the lines are always very evident because the line art is very thick. On ours, the line art is really fine. So if you if you look in the end, when you look at this, the lines are pretty much gone. The lines are just to hold the colour into place. And, and because they're quite open, remember yesterday we were talking about on the cape, we could change the cape and put a doodle within the cape to make it easier to draw. Because the larger the expanse, the more difficult, right? So let's have a look. So, so what we're going to do now is we're going to create this this comb. See this this effect. So I'm going to use my uh, HB pencil and I'm going to look at this as if it was like um, uh, like a frill because that's really what it is, isn't it? So if you imagine the lights coming from here, right, and as it comes down, there's going to be a little bit of shadow there. Let's just put a little bit in. It will help a lot. You'll get the picture. And then, of course, there'll be a little bit of depth down there. That's going to be where the, the frill is there, isn't it? See, right there. So it'll come down like so. Then this is going to be the light hits it there. So there's a little bit of depth there again, like that. Do you see? So the light's hitting that and then it tucks in. This is the, so it's like peaks and troughs, isn't it? So there's the trough again. So it comes up and down and up and down. And then you've got a little bit of a trough there and then a little bit of depth there as well see so what you really really lightly now this is really key when you do this as well right I'm hardly touching the when I when I color in and I do my work the best lesson that we're going to learn today let's call this today's lesson you're all you're just touching lightly lightly the surface you're not touching you're not pressing hard. So, for example, if we take a piece of white card, if I, if I really go so lightly that I'm hardly touching the paper, like that, right? If I press like that, it's too hard. So you can barely see it. 
you can always add pressure and of course if you do press too hard well then you know you that biggest selling item this is you just take it back don't you just lose it again okay um pink end not the white end the white end's the inky stuff for the parchment but so so today's lesson if we're going to have a target today then let's say that it's going to be really light layers, layer on layer on layer, gently does it, gently, gently does it. So now we've done that, what we'll do now, and I mean, this is it, I, I am no expert. I am no expert. I just been doing it for a long time and I've got my, my kind of, my routine. You know, I've got a routine. And so what I'm going to do now is very, very gently. Again, let me take my, where's that piece of paper I was just working on? Right, gently, gently. Right, I'm just going to do this for a minute. Just get my eye in and get the, it's like a soft. See, now it's soft. I've made a flat side to the pencil. See, if I turn the pencil round, it's sharper. If I turn it back to the flat, I've just got to find it again now. Because I don't want to waste good pencil. So let's have a look. Okay, re-establish grey. Right, so now I know where my, sh my flat side is. Holding it, locking it in. So I don't have to keep doing that. Right, and then what I'm going to do is just gently, gently now, just add a, l a very light layer. Look, small circular motions. And I'm hardly touching... Honestly, I'm hardly touching the paper. I'm hardly touching the picture. Just go like this and just go up like that. And just go really lightly, really lightly. It's almost like a pink, not a red, isn't it? See? A little bit of, I mean, the, these, these combs usually on the cockerels, I mean, I looked it up. They definitely are red. The ones I saw are anyway, right? So you just... Add a little bit of red. Leave a bit of white where the sun's going to hit. Remember, the sun's going to hit that bit there, isn't it? So we're going to add a little bit of... Um, we'll add a bit of yellow in there, I think. Right? So where you've put your grey, add your red over the top. It'd be nice. It's like an instant shadow. Look, trick. So now, straight away, you've already got your, your shade, haven't you? Because you put it in with a pencil first. See? Let me turn it round. It's already there. Mm -hmm. So let me get my chisel ready again, so I know where I'm, what side I'm on. It's all about the layers and it's all just gently, gently, like this, just build up the layers. And then it's about smoothing it out, isn't it? Right, there you go. See, down the road we can... We can add a bit more pressure, but for now, let's just get that colour in. Right, there we are. So now we're looking at where the the light is hitting, see? So you just add a little bit more depth there. Where we did the grey, where we did the pencil, that's exactly... There, look, it's looking like a proper comb. Nice. See, look, it, from that angle, it does look like folds, doesn't it? A bit extreme. But that's okay. That's that's what we want because this is going to be. This is going to be the same principle when we do when we do this. It's the same principle, so we might as well get this this going now. And then, if you want to, just like feathery strokes, if you like. There you go. Get in there. Just get that edge. See right at, on Friday when we come to the end of our our cock-a-doodle-doodle, -doodle, right, when we come to the end of it, what we'll do is, like we did with the nut hatcher, we'll go in and we'll sharpen the lines. Because don't forget, when you put the background in, when we do all the leaves and the flowers in the background, this fella is going to pop. Do you remember like the nut hatches did? Look, the nut hatches, they, they were kind of, they weren't really defined, were they, until, until we put the sky in and then they just went poof. And the way we, we really defined them was to then go in and define the line art, the outlines. And this is exactly what we'll do with the cockerel. 
but we've got to get the background in first. It's the same thing. It's the same thing, just a different colour. So now I've put me red in, like so. Okay, so a little bit of red there. And we've got our... There we go. So we've got our comb in, like that. Looking good. And then I think... I might add, I've got, I'm going to use a tester sheet here, just because I'm not sure with, I think I probably want to use the orangey colour. Yeah, I think so. What's this one? Oh, cadmium orange. Duh. Right, I think I'll use the cadmium orange. Just a little flash of orange through here. Not colouring all of it, just a little bit, just to add a bit of depth and interest. There you go, just a little flash of yellow in there. Nice. That'll do. Don't need lots. Just a little flash. You can always add it and you can take it away as well, can't you? And then I think what you want now is the darkest one. So let's have a look at the darker colour. Make the artwork come to you. If we want to add a real like, bit of depth around there, you, now you're adding shadow. See? So again, gentle light strokes. And this is going to really add interest. Look, see how you can change it just by adding a little bit of depth. There we go. So this is going to be in the dark, this area, isn't it? Let's assume that this is going to be, the light's not hitting the bottom of this. So we can just do light feathery strokes. Just little, I'm, I'm hardly touching the paper. If I want to touch, the, if I want to get some really dark colour in, then I just turn the pencil round to the sharper side. There you go, you see, and then I can get a really intense colour in. But whether or not I want to do that, I'm just, you know, the trouble is with this, you see, I over-egg it because I want to show you what I'm doing, and then, and then I spoil it. But that's all right. I've done it once already, so, see. The good thing is if you go over the line, so you can, that's the magic about these pencils, is if you if you think you uh, did a bit too much, you just take it back out again. Just do it, I'll just lose it again. Take take the colour out. See, it's gone. Interesting, isn't it? So you can see. So you so it's on, off, on, off. Let's have a look at mine, and then we'll have a look at check yours. Is it looking like so? Yeah. So there you go. That's not bad, is it? That'll do. We can always go back and titivate a bit. That's my middle name is titivate. That's all I ever do is go back a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Just got to know when to stop, haven't you? Now, so we've done the comb. Let's say that'll do for now. We can always go back and titivate. Do we agree? Yes. So let's do the wattle. The wattle. We can only see one. There's a pair of these. You ready? So he's got these two things hanging there, isn't he? So we've done the comb. Now we're going to do the wattles, all right? One wattle. <laughs> One wattle. Right, so wattle time. Ready? Everybody happy? Uh, wattles. I'm going to start with the lightest red because I want to play it safe. And I'm going to... If we look at what the one that I've already done, let's do that. You'll see that I'm 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 going to I'm leaving it white here as if the light was hitting it. Not white, but it's a kind of a pinky color. What I did was I put loads of red around the outside and then when I was happy with that, then what I did was I went in with um a nib. You know like these dry nibs that we've got. I went in with a dry nib. I'll show you later. But this is what you do, you see. Oh, that's a green one. That's no good. Let me find a... So I've got a green one, a blue one, and I've lost my red one. So let me get my little stash. There's a, that's all I need. I just need a nib. One for every colour. That's always a good move. See, and then what I do is I take my, my dry nib. And then when you, when you bring the colour in from here and you drag it through to smooth out this colour, so you see you're picking it up, and then you, you just smooth out this area here. And then when you go back in over the white area, it takes on the pink, see, because you've taken up a bit of pink. And that way you can spread it just like a hint of the colour. Look, see, it's not so white now. 
If I want it white again, you know in comes the rubber. But this is a really great way of smoothing out the colour. You could probably do it with your finger, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that. You do it. <laughs> right, so now, wattles a go-go. You ready? So what we're going to do, what are we going to do? <laughs> I'm going mad up here in the shack shack. Cock-a-doodle-doodle, what are we going to do? <laughs> right, it's all right. It's all right. Keep calm and carry on, Grey. Right, what all? This bit. First of all, let's get the red, the light red. We're using the geranium one, I think. Uh, any red will do, but the lighter of the two. And then what we'll do is, we're going to put our posh glasses on, my name Edna, so I can actually see what I'm doing. Ah, it's better. God, helps. Right, light, gentle, circular. Look, circular. See? Round and round, round and round, round and round. Round and round. Let me put that one. Where can I put that one so you can see it while I'm fiddling? If I do that, then you can see that, can't you, while I'm working? I think that's a good idea. Right, round and round we go. Like so. And remember, the object of the exercise today, guys, is to... Go as gently as you can. See if you can do it as gently. So you've got the colour in there. You've got the colour around there. You're not too worried about the colour here, are you? Because we're going to spread it out from where we go darker and darker. So you come round here like this gently, gently, gently. Right. Disappears to nothing. So now, hardly touching. Look. like Oh, it's just like a whisper. It's like... Honestly, it's like a whisper. The Germans would call it ein Hauch. It's just almost not even visible. That lightly. If you can colour in like that, if you can do that, that gently, so that it goes from quite dark here, and then really lightly, you're getting some really good pressure control. See? Gentle, gentle, circular motions. That's circular is always great for uh, for the undercoat. Little round movements like that. And then when you've got it like that, let's have a look, shall we? You're right doing this. See? So let me get in it's a little bit hazy till I get closer. There. I bet you're getting good at this now, aren't you? Right, so let's do that. So we've got a really nice undercoat down and now we can get a bit braver. So we're going with the next layer. So now again, I'll, I'll keep close to this edge though. See, I'm going to keep close to the edge. Do you remember what I said to you with these, with these pencils, when they, um, if you press too hard, you get like a sheen. Same with the perga liners. And then when it gets too glossy, it won't take any more colour if you press too hard. It can You, you can add colour on colour on colour and blend and blend and blend and blend. But if you press too hard, then it seals it, doesn't it? And sh if that happens, then we know now it's dead easy. All you've got to do is take your eraser, take your red wubber and just... Break up the surface again. Break the seal. And then you're off again. I think the most important thing to, to get, if you want to do this kind of colouring, the most important thing to understand is that it takes time. And I think... When you settle into it, see I've turned the pencil now so it's a little bit darker. Not the flat, I'm using the sharper side, see, because I'm going in. I'm using the same colour to get depth. Um, once you realise how long it all takes, and it's all about the titivating and going back and doing a little bit more and going in. See, now I'm going to take my red and while I'm on it I might as well just add a few flicks with the sharp. Look, 
from um, down the Cape area. You know this this bit which looks a little bit insipid at the moment. Got to add a little bit of colour down there as well. So we might as well get in there since we got the red in there. Feathery strokes. Do you remember yesterday we put the white in, didn't we? So just light feathery. Look, let's get that going as well. Let's add a little bit of colour. Don't worry, you take it out again. Oh, I tell you what, talking about capes yesterday. <laughs> you know, I went and cut my mum and dad's hair on Sunday, didn't I? And um, and so yesterday, Dave said, would you do mine? I said, of course I will. And uh, so we sat. In, he sat in the garden and I've got the old black cape, you know, like the babyliss. It comes with a kit, doesn't it? And uh, so I started cutting his hair. It was nice, you know. Seven o'clock in the evening, wasn't too hot. And um, of course we didn't have a mirror, so we couldn't see what I was doing. <laughs> and um, it was coming out all right. I was a bit nervous. He's got very, it's, it's, it's beautiful hair. He's got a full head of hair, but it's quite fine, you know. I was like, oh. So I didn't want to go wrong. I didn't want to make it all patchy. And... Um, so now I'm going to take my, my darker pencil, the darker red, okay? I'll go back in the wattle. So anyway, he was sitting there with his little black plastic cape on. <laughs> you know, like a, like a proper barber. And um, he was very brave, really. He didn't complain. <laughs> and... Um, And I kept titivating, you know, because you do, don't you? A little bit, oh, it's a little bit crooked on that side. Take a bit more off, take a bit more off. And, I... <laughs> and eventually I thought, well, I can't go any further now because in a minute it, it's going to be skin eddy, you know? We're going skin eddy here. And I don't really like Dave with too short hair. I like it long, gish, right? But he was getting those tufts around the ears, which looks a little bit unsightly, doesn't it? So, um... <laughs> <laughs> so I said, right, that'll do. That'll do, Dl, I said. But then, <laughs> when I... <laughs> got it. Is it working? But then, when I... Um, I made the, I don't know why I was so nervous. Because he's sitting there, he's got the cape on, like the black thing. And he's, you know, he's all stuck in, in his chair. And then, um, <laughs> normally, I just don't know what I was thinking. Normally, you take it off and you go like that, don't you? <laughs> and shake all the hair off, because it was covered in hair, right? Instead of doing that, I grabbed it from the front, in front of him, and went like <laughs> it went, it went... I don't know what I was thinking. I just, I've literally just emptied the entire, the cutting session into his, into his eyes, into his mouth, into his nose, and then we started laughing. And we just couldn't stop for about 15 minutes. And he didn't, he couldn't inhale because every time he inhaled, he started coughing because he had his hair. Pretty funny. So I'm not sure that I will ever make it as a professional hair cutter should Clarity Stamp go Pete Tong. But we did have a blimmin' laugh, I tell you. Laughter is such a good tonic, isn't it? And he left very early this morning. He had a job to do today. So he had to leave at four with his new haircut that's why he wanted his haircut I think he had to go and sort some stuff out um, there you go so is it coming together see there's the only difference is this is a lot darker isn't it well and also it's been smoothed out do you remember what I did with the um, um, the blending pen that makes a big difference you know when you do that Let's have a, I'll just show you as soon as you do this, you watch, see it smoothing out, look. I don't know if you can see this. Just so you understand how I got to there, look, already it started here, look. So when you go round now, so you're pulling in the colour, so you just gently, you don't have to press hard. You're pulling the pigment in from the outside, but look how it changes it, look. It's, it's very good. So I've gone round now, and I'm sort of ginger around, so I've got this really big white area there, haven't I? So what I'll do is I'll, 
I'll just come in now, just gently, and I'll go over that white area, and you'll see it will change colour. Because, of course, I'm using the colour that I've got on my nib now, and I can go in there, pull a bit more in. See how it changes, look. Brilliant, that is. And then if I want to get a little bit more con like here, because this is a little bit stripey, isn't it? This is, looks like <laughs> like Barbara's been at it. But I can take my, my, my blending nib, you see, and I can just flick through <clears throat> this area too. I can do this area, I can do this area. This is the way that you tone it all back. Look, but what a difference. Look, doesn't that look nice now? There you go. Just tone it through. Rubber, 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 blending pens. There you go. And when you look from above, you'll see <clears throat> the only difference is more, just more. So in other words, I've gone in darker, darker, titivating. That's what that's called. See, and you can go in now. What I, I like, I don't know, I don't know, but if you, instead of going right to the edge, stay shy of the edge. Like just a little bit, like this, see? And you'll see that that kind of, it changes it. Look, see? So you're getting, um, mm, it gives it a bit more interest. Titivating, eh? You go in, add a bit more depth. But you see how by not going right to the actual black line just like feathery like that so it changes it a bit there you go see what i mean and then again if you want it to stay a little bit t textured or gritty then don't do this don't do this if you want to blend it in and just keep darkening the layers then just tone it in and then take the next layer and the next layer and the next layer, and layer and layer and layer and then if you want it to be dark dark you can, you've got choices. You can either press really hard, yeah? See, that will really give you depth just by pressing hard with the, just press harder. That works, doesn't it? And then you can either, you can sweep through with your blending pen or not. And then the other way to get really dark, of course, is to put in your HB pencil. That will always give you that depth, won't it? Just a little flash of shadow and that works as well. There you go. So, so we've done the comb and we've done the wattle. Are you keeping up all right? I bet you're already on the tail feathers, aren't you? Hmm? Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Oh, is she going to sneeze? Isn't she going to sneeze? So, you can see now we're moving and we've done a little bit more red on that. Looks a little bit wild. The thing is though, all these techniques, these simple techniques, if you, like, let's, if you just, you just keep another flash of colour, you know, if you were doing a lion or a cat or a dog or, this is the way that you would build up, you'd probably use different colours, but if you, if you like, this is the way that you would build up their, their fur, you know, sometime in the next couple of weeks next few weeks I'd love to do the owls with you and teach you how to do they take a long time but the effect is a spec well I love it I think it's great see so we can put down a bit more of the redder color see darker 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 but the trouble is you don't want it to look too stripy because I think that looks like rubbish when it's too stripy person personally right but you'll see as you do this layer on layer on layer it will the, the, the it will disappear the stripiness will go you just put a yellow yellow white red yellow white red yellow white red and then eventually you go in with your rubber or your blending tool and suddenly you've got this amazing depth that'll do now or what I don't want to spoil any I don't want to do any more to that see and then you can either go through like this, or let me just show you what I'm getting at, because we can always repeat it. See how it looks really stripy? I'm not, I'm not keen on this, but I want to show you, because a lot of you will get this, and you'll think, well, I'm not really that fussed. 
The reason it looks like that is because I went so fast. Remember, it's click, 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 flick, 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 flick. No, no time involved. Just like, and that's what you end up with. But if then I've got that and I'm not that keen on it, watch when I take my rubber and I rub through, just flicking up. Mind the wattle, otherwise all that would have been for now. But you'll see as I flick through here with my rubber, see how it changes it, look. See? So that's what I'm saying is you take it out, you put it back in, you take it out, you put it back in. So it's 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 no hard it, it, you'll see in a minute it will end up looking magnificent. Just don't it's not over till it's over. All right? All right, that's it, that's it. So we've done the we've done the comb, we've done the wattle, we've titivated a little bit on the the cape again, and I think we should get started on the tail feathers. Yeah? The tail feathers. Let me show you. You need a light blue or a turquoise to start. So I'm going to go with uh, the polychroma. I'm going with cobalt green. Now, do you remember I said in the, if you're using the pergolines, use any turquoise. You've all got a turquoise of some description. Just use a light one. If you've got a light one and a dark one, start with the light one. See, I would be tempted to start with that blue, B16, if I was using the pergoliners. That's exactly what I would do. And what we're going to do, just for orientation, just to get started, so that you know where you are, what's a feather and what's a, what's a, um, a plant, do yourself a favour and just go lightly round the outside, lightly. It's good practice in not pressing too hard. Just go round the outside and just give yourself the edge so that you know. See that this here... Look, if you start looking at it now, you'll see that this comes round here. There's a plant in there. This sickle feather here, it comes round here like that. It cuts round there like that. Look, see? And then it's, this is it as well. But in there, there's a plant. So in a minute, we're going to have some beautiful leafery through there, some foliage. How are you doing? Are you enjoying this? Are you all there? I'm in a little world of my own here with my colouring in. So you see, if you look at this one then, so then that there is actually a layer, isn't it? So there's a layer. See? Mm. There's another layer. See, when you look at them, see how this one here, it tucks in there. So actually, let's have a look. So this then, if that's that's the layer underneath, then this one here is also a layer. Let me come round here and you'll see that that is also a layer. Let's just pop that in. And it will just, it's just looking. You see, that's a layer. Check it out. That's definitely a layer. Look, see, that one flies over the top and then this one's tucked in underneath there, isn't it? And when you look at these feathers here on the body as well, on the the tail here, you'll see there's more layers. There's a layer, there's, a, there's, there's underneath. Do you remember what we were doing there? When we were doing the underneath layers. Look, here's another one. Now this one, look, I can show you. If you check it out, just look at what you're looking at and you'll see this one. If I do that, don't forget, you can rub it all out anyway. See, that one is almost on top of that one and that one. Th this one is over the top of it, in my head. That's how I see this. See, so then, but this is the, the actual feather round there. That's a feather. That's a feather. And then, and then the body. All this is going to be the same colour. Similar, lighter, darker. Like that. See, so that's going to I'm going to come all the way around here. I'm just putting in the lines, really, so I, I, can, I know where I'm going. I think I need, I need that. Otherwise, you're going away, and then suddenly you realise, hang on a minute, this is her. <laughs> I'm colouring her in. Or, um, or I'm colouring in the tree or the leaves, and you think, ah, oh, then you've got to start again. Yeah? So... The way that I built these layers up, the way that I built these layers up, 
it was um, it's quite easy, but you'll know that I used a white pencil in there, didn't I? Right, hang on a minute. This is like a marathon. <laughs> It's like a full-on workshop, this. <laughs> Chill. This is supposed to be enjoyable. That's better. Um, because if I'm getting stressed, you're getting stressed. And we're supposed to be enjoying this. This is supposed to be relaxing. This is supposed to be taking us out of ourselves. <laughs> this is us chillaxing. Yeah? It's not a competition. It's not a workshop. You haven't paid. You, you, there's no performance here. All we're doing is hanging out together. Come on, reality check. Because I can feel you going, yeah, but this isn't the right blue. <laughs> doesn't matter. Okay, it's your cockerel. You can make it any colour you like. Anyway, they're not like this. Cockerels, they're lots of brown, you know. They're not all bright turquoise and red and orange. I'm doing that because I want to, I want to have a vibrant cockerel. Okay. My point is, can we chill? Can we agree just to... Is that good? Is that better? There's so much aggro at the moment. There's so much rubbish, isn't there? So much confusion. Let's just circle the wagons, right? Our little shack shack. That's what it feels like here. It is, it's like a real, I've got all my gear here. Look, I've still got last week's. I've got the plate, the bowl. I've got my postcards. I've got my colouring pencils. I've got groovy plates, I've got moons, I've got all my gear. It's like a proper little shack shack, you know? And I nestle in here, and I've got my pens and my rulers. Is that what your place is like? like that. Everything is here. Isn't that lovely, you know? But I could feel myself thinking, hang on, we've got to do these tail feathers. No, we haven't. Just, we will do them. But there's, it's not compulsory, is it? And there's hundreds of people just watching us, you know, while we're peddling away, colouring in this cockerel. There's smart people sitting at the back with their cup of tea, uh -huh, and they're watching us peddling here. <laughs> hmm? And now, we'll have a look at the tail feathers. <laughs> so, we've established, haven't we, where they are. And then, let's have a close look at m the one I did this morning, right? Bear in mind, two hours. We've got 15 minutes. So, the chances of us producing this in 15 minutes are pretty slim. But we're going to put the underlayer in, aren't we? We're going to put the underlayer in, and I'll show you how. So I did two things. I took the lightest one, and I took the white one, okay? And then, because when you look at mine, you can see there are it, they're feathers. Do you remember when we did the feathers last on the Dreamcatcher? They were easy. Little did you know that we were going to do the tail feathers of a cockerel this week. See, life's like that. <laughs> right, you ready? What you want to do is pretend that these lines, okay, what we're going to do is just pretend that these lines are um, the folds. Look, see, like that. So take, take your blue one, your light blue one, very, 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 very lightly very 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 lightly on this side so on this side here right I do you know what I've got to sharpen this I've made it what we're gonna do yeah that's better 
take your light blue one or your, t your light turquoise one. What we're going to do is we're going to make l like feathery strokes, but only on this side, on this, on the top side of the lines. There you go. Okay. So you could do it upside down, you, you know, like this. Light feathery strokes. Really close. And I and 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 not and almost you know like hardly touching the paper. Like we did last week. See it's so different, isn't it, when you when you doodle versus colouring in. Hey? So do you see what I'm doing? Just lightly. It's just about getting that textury thing in, see? So it's like these are the the feather, the spine of the feather again. Cool, are you sick of feathers yet? <laughs> see? So just little be alright. Trust. This is how I got that result, so it worked the first time, so I'm, chances are it'll work the second time as well. See, so you do that, and then you're just doing it on the one side. Okay. Just on the one side. Not too hard, just gently. We're going to rub half of it out again in a minute, but it just gives you a kind of a... A feathery look like that yeah and then with the white one let's just do let's do the top ones we don't have to do the whole lot let's just do the first few because then that way you can repeat it all the way down can't you now I do the white one hang on that's a little bit sharp it's going to break right so now the white one what I want to do now is do this go over the same thing again with the white as well because that will give you some lovely texture. But this time, when you do the white in the same direction, this way, not as much, come down the other way, like almost like crisscross. So, th so that you're doing both sides of the lines with the white one. Come down like that, not so much, and then down on the other side as well. So you're almost doing crisscross. Mm-hmm. It's not terminal if you get it wrong. It just, you'll see in a minute, when you go over the top, the white gives you really good texture. It's that resist, it's that resist technique, isn't it? Do you remember? Right, just add the white lines. Because when you, see, and what I do is, I have to do this because you can't see. If I, if I hold it up like that and I hold it like that, that's when I can see where the white is. See exactly where the white is. Yeah, not bad. You'll soon see in a minute when you go to add another colour over the top. Right, so now we've got that, say. Yeah. And then what we're going to do, just so you get the, the drift, the shadow is going to be on the top, on the top side. Always on the top side. That's what will give us this. Uh, so, for example, I'm going to put the shadow, small little strokes, and I'm using the light blue one. Use the lightest blue again, just to establish the shade. And you're staying right close in, like that. And you're just going to keep going on that one there, like that. And then you come in on this one, and just small little circular motions. Can you see this all right? Let's go into that other camera, see if that helps. Right, so little circular motions again. But it's this edge here that you're using, that one. So where you put the light feathers in before, all those light feathers, they're going to start disappearing now because you're going over the top of them with your... See? With your blue. Like so. And if you're wondering, well, hang on a minute, what about the white bit here? Oh, we'll rub that out. That's going to... We'll just take it out with the rubber. You watch. That's, the, you know, that's the key. Do you remember that boyfriend of mine that I told you about that used to go at his artwork ferociously with, with a hairdryer and loo roll and whatever he had to hand to get the effect he wanted? Well, that's the same as us. 
we didn't read the rule book we just want to get the the right effect don't we and if I have to go through this with a rubber and the eraser then that's what we should do see so you're going through on that line there and you just small circular motions and it will give you don't forget two hours two hours that took me so you can't possibly hope to do this in 10 minutes can you however you've got all afternoon what a result hey so you could carry on and you could do exactly this look see how it starts to so we're just using the lightest color on this edge here like that and where it's darker see if you get in darker on that edge always on this edge here what will happen is it will make the other edge pop so for example now you'll see if I keep staying on that side it's just exactly the same as when we did a hot air balloon look do that look at that and think of a hot air balloon it's the same thing it's the same principle and all we did was put a few feathers in first to give us a bit of resist look and then if we take a darker color I probably I might even come in here and just take out a little bit of the color first before I even start just like that right, make sure your rubber's clean before you do that grey okay no worries right see so I could go in with a darker colour just gently 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 see, and when you because obviously it's going to be darker in there look how dark I made it there see so then you come in and you start teasing the dark colour through here and this is what I wanted to show you and I know I'm fast forwarding a little bit but you'll see as I come in over the top of those white remember when we put the white ones in you see as I come up here you see it, there's a resist going on I can press really hard as well now if I bring this up to this camera if I offer it up to you here if I hold it up really tight, hang on a minute, let it focus. Can you see the resist? Let me come in more and more. Oh, my tummy. See the white bits? That's from the pencil, you see. That's how you get that resist technique. That's, that's what that's all about. And what I, what I find is that you just... So what you're going to do, is, what I find is that the resist comes out more and more as you add m more colour. So the white, the white lines will start to come through. And you work slowly and you work gently. And then as you start to, and you keep getting tighter and tighter into the lines. You see how I'm just working on a couple of these tail feathers just to show you how just this is exactly what we were doing before but we were doing it on a hot air balloon for example yeah exactly the same it's it's no different to what we did when we were doodling with a with a sh pencil with an HB pencil you see and then you can come in and the depth you go the lightest one and then you start bringing in that dark colour. So now the trick you see is to concentrate the depth of colour where you want the, the pleat. So if you are looking at this one here you'll see you've got the lightest colour always here, there, there and there. And then the light, the, see, so the lighter colour is going to be, let me just get my pencil flat, right, that side, that side. I'm giving you homework here, guys, you know that, and that side, right. So 
you're going to get your light colour in there. Don't forget your white bits though, your feathering. Remember? You're going to do that. And then this is this line here is the one. This is the one that you put in pre uh, earlier on, preliminarily. Cool, that's a long word. Preliminarily, that one there is the one that's going to give you that optical illusion of depth. Do you remember when we did, when we do shading, if it's, if this one covers up all these ones, you can make this as dark as you like, can't you? This, this, this here, look, as soon as you get in tight on that line, oh, don't press that hard. See, when you get in tight on that line, you'll see that that, so you don't, don't go too fast, so it's layers. You've got to do the light layers before you do the dark layers. Right. But you'll see that that there is, see already, it's starting to get the, the, the depth on it. So, but you're always going to be adding, it's the opposite of what you think. You're going to put the shade over on the top so that this is the top of the feather. The sun is hitting these lines here. If I was to take colour out again to show you where the sun is hitting you, and on that note, I'll, I'll leave it. Um, but I'll do a close-up of this. Uh, I'll take a picture of it and do a close-up of it and put it on, on Clarity Worldwide. I, I, Stuart will do that for me, won't you, Stuart? Right. If I was going to show you where the sun is hitting, look, I can take it out here. You'll see. It's there, there, there. Right. So it's, it's the top. So then that's why the, the shade has to go in there. Does that make sense? I think it does to me. And that's how this has ended up with the shade there on these sides. See? That's how you get that, that effect by adding the shade on that side. You'd be tempted, this is the bottom line, you'd be tempted, because the sun, say that's say that's sun or a sunflower, you'd be tempted to to think that the you put the shadow there. But it's the opposite. If you did the shadow there, it would look, it would be like a cascade, like a like the roof tiles on, on the shack shack. Do you see what I mean? But we're doing the opposite. We want the sun to hit the top. So it's just an, it's reverse shading really. Only when you put it underneath like that, does it make it look as if it's folded over the top. Do you get it? Sounds very technical. It isn't. And the thing is, if you do it, look at what you're doing, look at it and say, well, the, have I shaded the right side of the line? And you'll see, if you haven't, just take your, rub, your eraser, your rubber, take your rubber and just rub it out and go from the other side. And you'll, you'll see the effects. Work. You need three pencils, a light one, a medium one and a dark one, and you need a wabba. You definitely need an eraser pencil. And then what I would really love you to do, because tomorrow's already Wednesday, Oh no, we could spend a fortnight doing this, but we're not going to. Um, what I think would be really super is if you could do the tail feathers. And you know what? The body feathers are no different. It's exactly the same. It's the light blue, little feathery strokes, the white, little feathery strokes. Then decide where you're going to start adding the shade. Above the line or below the line. The lines are there for you. Okay? And then tomorrow... We can titivate together. How's that sound? We'll titivate. And then tomorrow, Wednesday, we'll, yeah, we'll have a look at her. We'll do her. She's easier. We've definitely, we definitely started with the cockerel for a reason. Yeah. But I think if we do the tail feathers and perhaps, let's have a look. Yeah, you should be able to do the, the breast feathers and the, you know, the whole the thing and then tomorrow we'll have another look at it how does that sound are you happy with that i think we'll have a good time it's going to be wonderful and then that means wednesday we do that and then we've got thursday to do all the leafery you see the and then friday the back background so that's important really because next week we're going on our travels again so that we, a week a week on a postcard i think is adequate don't you <laughs> do me a favor Follow, like and share this, this video so that other people can join in. 
If you haven't got your postcards, we're sending them out like that at the moment. We pull all the orders for the postcards to the front, so we're all, you know, it's it's good to be colouring in on, on the same hymn sheet, isn't it? Otherwise, it'd be quite difficult for me to, to explain this. But because we're all working off the same um, artwork, it's really cool, actually. And the other thing is that these are all recorded on Clarity YouTube. So even if you haven't been able to join in today because you didn't have the cockerel postcard, order it. Wait a couple of days, wait a week. Even if you're in Australia, it'll only take a week to get to you. And then go back to the Shack Shack recordings and catch up with us. Because as far as I know, unless, unless the rules change, we're going to be here for quite a while together, aren't we? Anyway. It's good to have your company and, uh, and I hope that you have a smashing day. Keep going, stay calm and keep crafting and I'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Same time, same place. Lots of love to you, be safe. And, uh, and enjoy your cock-a-doodle-doodling. Bye-bye now. <laughs>